flip. So power handling. What, what we're trying to do here at Kicker, at least for us, is we don't want to put power handling on speakers. It makes you, when you take it out of the box and you get to experience it, you want to go throw it in the trash can like those toasted Cheez-Its because we don't want you to have that bad of an experience. So no. it's always for us uh, when it comes to rating speakers. We do. I mean, any manufacturer is inclined. We want to put the biggest power handling on a speaker that makes sense because, unfortunately, people out there who are buying speakers, all they look at is watts and dollars. They look at how many watts the speaker says it can hold or take, and right. then they say, well, how much does it cost? And they try to come up with a value proposition on that. So we try uh, to come up with real-world testing parameters, um, and one of them is we have, like I said, this brutal it's a 20 to 80 hertz pink noise test that we run our speakers through, and the RMS rating of our speakers have to pass through that testing before that becomes the RMS rating. And if the speaker won't pass that RMS rating, then for us, it boils down to, we have to roll the power back to come up with a lower RMS rating and run through that testing again, or we have to go, okay, is this a material limitation that we could correct and still try to be around the same price point in everything where we're targeting this product to be? So is it a material right. limitation or are we really just trying to get too much power into it for what it is? And, and of course, that becomes a whole engineering marketing discussion where we just keep testing and trying to figure things out. So for our for our speakers, RMS means something. It is a valid number. It does tell you something. And just understand the peak ratings. We kind of follow the... the uh, the same industry standard of just doubling peak to co or doubling RMS to come up with a peak rating. Right. Absolutely. I like how you guys, you, you, you don't uh, spare no expense. And, and with the manuals, you guys uh, still even list, you know, power ratings for different types of enclosures uh, and different sizes, obviously, because, you know, they're different enclosures. I like that. Well, you know, the reason that exists, Andy, the rating on closure. So if you go to any, uh, pick out any speaker you want on kicker.com, we actually have a, a power bar and there's sealed enclosures and we show a power range and there's vented enclosures and we show a power range. And what we're doing there is once you get a speaker to its mechanical limit, meaning it can't move any further. So let's take, let's say, for example, you got this speaker that's rated at 800 watts RMS and you put it into this really large ported enclosure because you're trying to accentuate or get a lot of really low bottom end out of it. When you go into that big of an enclosure, the spring or the air spring that's at air volume, which helps control that speaker while it's moving, is very, very big. It's very, very loose. The suspension is very loose. The air spring is very loose. So to get to the mechanical limits of that speaker, it's not going to take 800 watts of power. You're probably going to get to the mechanical limits on that speaker with easily probably four to 500 watts of power. So it's not that the voice coil isn't capable of the 500 watt RMS power rating we put on it, but then the other thing you got to look at when it comes to speakers is the voice coil's got to stay together and the speaker can only move so far. And if you've already moved the speaker, if it, let's just pick a number. If this speaker is designed to move 10 millimeters this way and 10 millimeters this way, and if you move it any further, the surround would break, the spider would break, the tinsel leads would break because that's all the movement that's designed into the mechanical parts. You can't move any further. So if I get to its mechanical excursion before I get to the RMS power rating, you don't need to run more power into that speaker because you can't move it any further. Right. And it's that's a, it's why it's going to be like clipping for an amplifier, but clipping for a subwoofer. You're just going to reach it, the, the peak. Yeah, it is. It's mechanic. You're exactly right, Andy. It's mechanical clipping because you've moved the speaker as far as it can go one way. It can't. The only way the speaker could move any further is if something broke. If the surround let go, if the spider let go, that's the only way it could move out any further. And the same thing going back. It can't move back any further because for it to do that, the spider would have to break or the surround would have to break. And the surround and the spider are the two mechanical items that control the and limit the excursion of a driver. Control number one, and it limits it. You want to we design all of our speakers that we call a soft limit. We don't want the voice cool bottoming out on the back plate. And so right. we let we make sure that. Uh, the woofer has all the travel it needs, but we let the suspension, which is the surround and the spider, control that so that we're not bottoming out on the back plate. Uh, we want to prevent that in all of our speaker designs. So that's why we do that on the web page, and you see that range on there is because if it only if it's 500 watt RMS speaker, but you're going to get to full mechanical excursion in this box with 300 watts, we want you to know that's where you should probably stop because you're not going to get right. any more out of the speaker. Right. You're going to need more power for a sealed enclosure because there's there's more of that, like, you know, that that spring, that acoustical spring inside the enclosure. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs>